loud. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Tim and our social media person, Hillary, for another Dr. Tim's Aquatics podcast. How are you doing this morning, Hillary? Doing good. Just sitting here with my uh, cup of coffee and my fancy Dr. Tim's Aquatics mug. <laughs> well, we're going to start some way of awarding a few of those to people. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, we'll have to have a question or something. You can figure that out. We'll send someone a limited edition bright red Dr. Tim's coffee mug with spoon. Yes, the stir spoon. That's that's a selling point. <laughs> that's it. Except we're giving them away. <laughs> All right. So what's the topic today? So today we are going to be talking about two of our products, First Defense and Eco Balance. Um, each month, I've been kind of trying to stick to a theme for our month, and these are the two products that I'll be talking about on our social media platforms. So I figure why not go a little bit more in depth than what we would do on social media. Great, because th these are two really nice but sleeper products, and they're really they're really good to for preventative. You know, when you're talking about your own health, what's the best way to treat being ill, well, don't get ill in the first place. And, and oh. that's by eating right, you know, getting, getting sleep, vitamins, things like that, and just take care of yourself. And that's what these products are. They're kind of a, a preventative or a proactive. And that's what we'll talk about. And I'll explain what's behind both these products individually, and then how they can work together to basically uh, keep your fish, corals, all your all your animals healthy, and keep out the bad guys. Yep. Yeah, I'm really excited for these. Like you said, that they're like sleeper products, and I would agree. Like first defense is one of those things that you know, even before we started working together, like that is always a product that I have on hand for emergencies, for getting. Well, I'm not for all of the reasons that it's used, but it's one of my favorite products that's available on the market. So. Yeah, let's let's jump right in and talk about First Defense. All right, so First Defense is one of the few products that we make that is not a bacteria. It's eight different types of vitamins, an immunostimulant, uh, a slime coat replacement, and a buffering agent. All mixed in one, it uh, is... Really, when should you use it? Well, it's, it also dechlorinates. So it's, it also dechlorinates, removes chlorine and chloramine from the water. And the first place to use it is actually when you're setting up your new tank, if, if you're doing a fishless cycle, because it makes no sense to add our aqua cleanse or any type of ammonia remover like Prime to the water and then add the ammonia drops. So first defense does not do anything to ammonia. It will uh, detoxify chlorine and chloramine, but it leaves the ammonia to the one and only bacteria. Good to know. Now I'm, I'm gonna take a step back. So you said that it's got immunostimulants in it. What is that? Well, immunostimulant is and, and this is one thing that is proprietary. I've done a lot of work on that. And uh, I'm sure my competition is listening to these. So we're not going to tell you what that exactly is. But what an immunostimulant does is that it stimulates the killer T cells. It stimulates the immune system. How do your immune system normally works is that it's on constant guard. It's out there surveying the internal environment for any invaders. But, and we won't get too much into this because it is a high level topic, but bacteria want to get into the fish system or even your you know, blood system in, in your system and undetected because when the immune system detects a foreign body, that's when it starts generating all the antibodies um, to fight it as much like what's you know, going on with the vaccines for the, for the COVID. And so bacteria have determined ways to mask their presence until they get 
uh, grow to a, a significant number. And then they do something what's called quorum sense, which is basically they all signal each other to turn on. And then, you know, you've got a huge Klingon force standing or swarming outside the enterprise and it's too late. How's that for a, an analogy? But that's really how it works. And so we're, we're going to try to battle that in that what happens is that with your immune system, it doesn't really turn on until there is a presence, a large enough presence of uh, the foreign bodies. And so how, I mean, how, how is this practical? When you get a new fish, normally that fish doesn't break down or break, you know, you don't get a bacterial problem or the fish doesn't show that it's having problems the first day. It's like three or four days later, the fish will be up at the top and it's just shimmying, all its fins are clamped. And if you've had fish for a while, you know, it's got a bacterial infection, there's something wrong. And unfortunately by that time, in many cases, it's too late. Well, with an amino stimulant, basically what we do is we fool the immune system into turning on. We stimulate the immune system right now so that it starts producing the killer T cells and the other parts of the immune system and go out into the body and search for foreign invaders. And that's what an immuno stimulant is. And that's why you don't always want to bathe your fish. First defense is not something that you use every day of the week because you don't always want to be stimulating the immune system. So it's great when uh, stores use it when bagging a fish. It's great when you're acclimating, especially saltwater fish, put some in the bucket or bag as you're acclimating them, if that's how you acclimate or add it to the water when you put the fish in the tank, you salt water, hopefully you're quarantining, add it to the quarantine tank um, to help stimulate the immune system to get the fish to start internally fighting any invaders uh, before it's too late. Good, I like that. Now, you've touched a little bit about salt water. So this is available as a freshwater product and a salt water product? Right. And if, because I know we've touched on this in the past, if you accidentally buy, you know, the freshwater version and you need the saltwater version, is it going to work or do you need to go back and exchange those? No, yeah. it's going to work. It's a slightly different mix in concentration of the vitamins because, uh, let's see if we get this right. Freshwater fish are always drinking water. Okay. And I think I just had that wrong. <laughs> uh, saltwater fish are always drinking the water. Um, and so certain vitamins uh, are water soluble and certain vitamins are fat soluble. Mm -hmm. Since saltwater fish are always drinking water, we can have more fat soluble vitamins because they're getting into the fish by the fish, you know, drinking the water. Where freshwater fish don't drink water because they're, uh, they're uh, saltier than the surrounding water. So osmosis is driving the water into them. And that way you need water soluble vitamins so that it, they can be quickly absorbed into the fish. Good to know. So, so we use a slight uh, different mix of vitamins and we use different concentrations based on the fact that uh, the osmosis and the you know different freshwater fish are different than saltwater fish when it comes to drinking or not drinking water. Good to know. So you can use either or, but if you have the ability to go back and swap that out and get the right one. Yeah, wow. if but but if you can, but if it's going to be a hassle or things, it's it's not going to matter. It's it's really you're really not going to see the difference. Good to know. All right. Now you touched on using first defense, say when you are acclimating fish, when you get new fish, but are there any other times when it is a good idea to use this? Well, when, when your fish, we're doing disease, disease treatment, it's always good mm -hmm. because the fish are stressed. If your fish aren't feeding, they just seem to go off feed. They're 
lackadaisical. Uh, vitamins are a great way to stimulate the feed, um, the feeding response. Uh, if you've had a stress event, say that your, your water was really cold because of the freeze a couple of weeks ago, you lost electricity, your fish made it through, that's a stress event. And just like you know, what your mom would say, you know, take some vitamin C, you're going to catch a cold or, you know, drink some chicken soup because that has these beta glucans in it. I mean, all the, these wives tales uh, have some science behind them. Well, it's the same with the vitamins is that if there's a stress event, get active, proactive, don't wait for the fish to break. Uh, you know, add some vitamins now to help the fish along and help it repair its cells and recuperate from the stress event that it just experienced. Yeah. One of the times, speaking of stress events, I like to use it if I've noticed any of my fish fighting, because occasionally you'll try and get like a new fish and they won't get along and you'll see the one fish getting beat up on like, all right, I'm going to have to remove the fish, but then I also am going to use first defense. Just this fish is getting beat on why not go ahead and put some of that in there and help them? Exactly. And you can see the difference. What I, you know, people, uh, I'm not sure it's just these liquids. Well, uh, freshwater people try this when using Australian rainbows or saltwater people with a powder blue tang, you know, oh. two groups, because those are two groups of fish that seem to break down really easily. I mean, any type of stress event. And with the first defense, uh, you'll see, just how the fish responds it's uh it, it really shows you the the uh, quality behind the product oh, that's good to know so obviously it's going to work on fish but i mean and I, i'm coming from a saltwater perspective when i'm asking this good for dipping corals or like when you've just fragged corals how does it work with you know any other animals critters that might be in your tank shrimp crabs snails yep well, one, it's completely non-toxic to all those animals. And yes, it definitely helps. I mean, they, they have, an all animals have an immune response. Uh, and also cells respond to vitamins. And vitamins can be antioxidants in there. Uh, so they, I mean, the degree they'll respond is, is different than a fish, but they definitely respond and it's beneficial when you're um, you're fragging, you know, put the corals in in some first defense uh, in your water, and it will definitely help them uh, repair cell repair in, uh, faster. And uh, you got to remember there are symbiotic bacteria or uh, algae in the corals too, and they'll respond positively. And we'll get, we'll get into that about how to use equal balance and first defense together later on. Yes. And, you know, I'm glad we're talking about corals. So I think it was, gosh, Sunday. So not even quite a week. I've got a um, kryptonite candy cane coral in my tank and that's the one coral I always know. I'm like, all right, it's time to do a water change because this guy is looking terrible. And I was looking close and it's just, it's losing some of the flesh. And it looks, it looked terrible. And so I, I did a water change and I added some first defense to it. And I kid you not, the parts that were missing that had kind of degraded a little bit, it's almost completely come back and it hasn't even been a full week. So oh, yes, great definitely use that. it with your corals. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a lot of vitamin C in, um, first defense and vitamin C has really good antioxidant properties and antioxidant basically when cells start to be damaged or coral uh, you know, you have rapid tissue necrosis and people say, what's well, a Vibrio disease? Well, Vibrio is the secondary, what, what we call the secondary bacterial infection. Something happened to damage the cell wall, the coral you know, tissue. And Vibrio are opportunistic when they see damaged cells, just like when you have a cut, why do you wash that cut immediately and disinfect it? To clean it out and keep bacteria away. And that's the same thing you need to do with corals. The Vibrio will 
eventually caused that rapid tissue necrosis, but they weren't the initial factor. But you got to treat them because that's what's going to kill the animal. And first defense, I mean, we don't say it's a medicine, but definitely the antioxidant properties of some of the vitamins in there can help a lot. That is good. All right. Now I had a couple other questions and I think we've already talked about them. Um, but well, let's, let's go back. So stress relief, how, and I don't know if you're able to fully get into this or explain this, how does it work? relieving the stress on fish? Because if you look at the bottle, it says, um, like, that's one of the things that it lists on the label. Right. Well, th how it works is that w when you're, when you're stressed, you're, you're susceptible to bacterial diseases, viruses, and things like that. When the fish is stressed, it's in that environment its cells need protecting. And basically it gets back to the antioxidant um, abilities of some of the vitamins that are in there and, and also stimulating the immune system. So it's a, it's a multifaceted approach to help that uh, fish reduce the stress level on the cells because stress, stress is really happening at the cell level. If, and I don't want to get too technical about that, but if you can eliminate some of the stress on the chemical stress on the cell, because when you get down to it, that's what it all is. There's some, there's a chemical uh, stressor. We could be, that chemical can be extruded by bacteria or viruses or something like that, but there's something that's causing that cell to be, to be uh, stressed, you know, not, not, be in a perfect condition and we need to eliminate that. And that's what antioxidants and different things like that do. And that's what this has in it. All right. Good to know. Now, when we're using this in the tank, um, how, how, how am I going to know it's working? How do I know that, like, do I need to dose it once, twice? Um, how frequently should I be adding this to my, if I'm, if I'm directly adding it to the tank, how frequently does that need to happen? Well, first, the components of first defense can be removed by activated carbon. Uh, they can be broken down by UV. They can also be removed by the protein skimmer. So if you are using those types of devices, once you add the first defense, realize that those devices are sl slowly going to remove them over time. And that's why... If you're doing something prophylactically in a hospital or quarantine tank, we recommend that you add the first defense every day. How you're going to see it working is just how you talked about a second ago about your coral. After a time, and it varies depending upon the organism, but within one or two days, you should see the fish color come back. You should see some wound repair where the, where the tissue is no longer receding, but actually being re, you know, repaired. Now it may be, it's got to slough off. If it's coral, it's got to get rid of that old tissue. It's kind of like when you have a wound, you know, you've got a scab or you've got that dead skin that's got to come off. And then underneath you have the new skin, the repair, the cells are dividing. So it's that type of thing with, with fish. It's much easier because you, they're going to not be up at the top shimming in the water with clamp fins and their appetite will come back. And that's one way that you'll be able to tell. That's why you really need to observe your fish. Uh, and you, you need to know when your fish are feeling good, you know, swimming around, eating good color so that when you see, well, what's my fish doesn't have the right color or it's just not, doesn't have that feeding activity. That's a indicator telling you there's something wrong. Do you have high ammonia? Is the heater on? You know, it just there could be an environmental problem, but the fish is telling you there's something wrong. Yep. I think it's so important to know what normal looks like for your fish, you know, for your plants, for anything that you've got in your tank. If you spend some time every day observing things, you're going to know you're going to be the first person to know that there's something wrong. And the sooner, you know, the sooner you can treat. Right. If you catch it fast, you can, you can fix it. 
Um, most people, it's beyond doing a bacterial diagnosis. So you want to catch the, the problem before it really wipes out your system. Um, and then first defense, you know, you can add it every day. Can you overdose? Not really. What will happen if you're adding a lot is your skimmer can go crazy. And some skimmers, I mean, there's a lot going on in there and they produce a lot of bubbles and a lot of froth and the first defense will cause the skimmers to go nuts. There's no doubt about it. It would be better once you add first defense to turn it off, uh, turn the skimmer off for a little bit to let that, uh, the first defense get through the whole tank, give the animals a chance to absorb it, salt water, drink it, things like that, get it inside them so it can be, you know, go to work. All right, good to know, good to know. Okay, I think that wraps up everything for first defense. Now let's move on to EcoBalance. So this, like you said, it's another one of the sleeper products that we have that I don't feel like is very well known that you know people don't know that it exists. So tell us a little bit about it. So EcoBalance, and, and there are some uh, pictures of some of the studies we did on this. Basically, it is a true probiotic. And I mean that, in terms of every company out there is telling you everything's probiotic um, and it's just marketing bunk. Okay. Uh, for EcoBalance is a probiotic in terms of, I spent time isolating bacteria from aquariums that produce what's called a bacteria sin. Just like penicillin, that's an antibiotic that kills bacteria. It has that Latin S-C-I-N on the end. A bacterial sin is a chemical extruded, ex extruded by one bacteria that kills another bacteria. And that's how probiotics, one way, one way probiotics work, is they're basically having chemical warfare. And the bacteria do this because they want resources and they want space. And if you spend the time in the lab, you can find bacteria that will extrude these bacteria sins for other types of bacteria. And then you grow them at a high concentration like we do the equal balance. And when you put them in the, the water, um, they will basically kill off the, the targeted bacteria. And the good part about probiotics like equal balance is they're targeted. They don't hurt the nitrifiers. They don't hurt many types of bacteria. What I did was isolated uh, bacteria that go after different strains of Vibrio. Um, and that's what it's for. It's basically to keep Vibrio at bay because we just know that there's Vibrio in your tank. It's all over the place. Usually it doesn't break out, but we're basically talking about stress agents and, and relieving the stress and fighting stress. And that's what these guys do is they go out and they try to eliminate the Vibrio bacteria that are in the aquarium. All right. I kind of feel the way you're talking about this, I feel like there needs to be like a fun little cartoon, like an animated cartoon with all of this. Okay. Anybody wants to do that? <laughs> Definitely not a cartoon drawer. But actually, pre probiotics have an interesting history. Um, and they were, they've been known for a long time. They were discovered at the turn of the 19th century. I mean, it's over 100 years probiotics have been known. And they were very popular, especially in Russia. That's where a lot of the old studies come from. And you could grow the bac uh, bacteria to basically cu cure, you know, kill other bacteria that were pathogenic to humans. And it started, you know, getting out of the folklore into the mainstream. But then mankind, you know, scientists discovered antibiotics. And antibiotics work much more, they work more quickly and they work more broadly, which is good and it's bad because now we have antibiotic 
resistance because we have the indiscriminate use for 60, 70 years of antibiotics, which is just causing lots of problems. Where probiotics, the good part is they're targeted. And also the bad part is they're targeted. You know, if, if you target for Vibrio, but it's some other type of bacteria that's really causing the problem, the probiotics aren't going to work. But adding a probiotic to your tank isn't going to wipe out all your bacteria. And as you've heard from all the talks, I'm definitely bacteria centric. We need them and we need to keep the right types of bacteria. The last thing we want to do is go into your aquarium and wipe out all the bacteria which is what a lot of people do by just adding antibiotics. Yep. No, I'm, I'm a big fan of not treating if I don't have to, if I can find a different way to treat it, or if I can avoid treating my whole tank. Definitely a big fan of that. Yeah. Oh. So I've got a question. This is one of the same questions I had for first defense. And I'm so when it comes to freshwater versus salt water, um, two different versions of it. Yes, two different versions because um, fresh water, you know, the, the bacteria are just different. The freshwater bacteria are different than the saltwater bacteria. So this one you definitely would need to go ahead. If you've got the wrong, if you accidentally got the wrong one, this is one that it would matter that you were going to need to go and get the correct one. To be most effective, you want to use the right one, whether it's now, if you have a, a saltwater marine reef seahorse, you know, a tank with salt in it, you can use the reef or the salt water. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to use the reef version in a reef tank. It's the reason we have products labeled salt water is that some people have salt water tanks, reef labeled products. There's per portions of the country where people have reef tanks and they will only buy products that are labeled for reefs. So, but, but these products are exactly the same, the salt water and the reef labeled products. Good to know. It's funny. You mentioned like people buying products for the labels. I can remember when I first started out in the hobby and I was asking somebody that worked at a fish store, I was like, will this work for my fish? And they're like, is there a picture of your fish on the front of the label? I was like, well, no. And they're like, well, it won't work for your fish. In reality, it would have worked. That totally was at a store? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good reason to always do your research before you buy stuff. Let's see. So that means how many different types of fish are there? Hundreds and hundreds? Oh, wow. <laughs> right. oh. Yeah. All right. Uh, and if you're doing, because people come up, you know, brackish water, you, you definitely want to go with the salt water version if you're using brackish mm. systems. Oh, yes. Good point. I was talking to somebody about brackish fish the other day, puffer fish. It's in brackish water. Yep. All right. So when should we be using this in our tank? Well, eco balance is like insurance. Um, you really should use the eco balance on a monthly basis uh, to just get in there and clean things out and keep Vibrio uh, and a freshwater version is not Vibrio, it goes after columnaris, uh, kind of at bay. I mean, it's, it's not a uh, treatment. If you have an outbreak, the chances of, of the equal balance uh, overwhelming those bacteria is low at that point. Because again, as I mentioned all the time, it's a numbers game. By the time you see the outbreak, there's so many of the bad guys that you really do need to get in there and wipe them out with something a little stronger or a lot stronger than the equal balance. That said, where these reservoirs, you know, certain these surfaces, these bacteria like to live on surfaces, and that's kind of the the uh, what we call the reservoir. That's where they they come out of off the surface into the water, or that you might have a UV um, that you're sterilizing the water with. But if you have a big reservoir under a rock, you know, some organic material or some surfaces where these bacteria are living, the bad bacteria, well, they're not being exposed to the UV. So they're doing fine. And that they're constantly feeding, you know, dividing and, and, and uh, propagating and seeding the water with, with their uh, 
other you know, with bacteria when they're spawning, as they're dividing, they're seeding the water with the bad bacteria, and that's what can reinfect your fish. So you need to really use it on a monthly basis. You know, go out and try to uh, get rid of all these bad bacteria before they can overwhelm the system. All right, I like that. Does put it in part of like your preventative maintenance plan, just like really you go what clean it is. your it's pumps. Yep. Every so often, make sure that you're using this every so often. Yep. Now, one thing, and we mentioned this on uh, the bottles and things, you would not use equal balance on the same day that you use like the waste away bacteria. You've got to be careful about overdosing bacteria, and these are. You know, they're not as concentrated. There's not as many uh, uh, strains or species as in waste away. But still, if you start adding lots of different bacteria at the same time, you can get a bloom. Or if you're adding some type of fuel, you know, carbon source, these are heterotrophic bacteria and they can bloom if you add carbon at the same time, which is why we also recommend not adding first defense on the same day you add equal balance or waste away to your tank because that can cause a bloom. Yep. Yeah, I like that. That's a good point. It, if you look on all the labels, I'm fairly certain it says don't use more than one product. One bacteria product per yep. day. Yep. So a lot of people, what they'll do is they're, they're dosing the waste away maybe every two weeks if you have a heavily stocked tank every week, except that one of those times, instead of doing the waste away, they'll hit the tank with the equal balance. Just sub it in there. Now, here's a question for you that I didn't have prepared. If they have the waste away gels, which we talked about in our last podcast, are they still going to be able to dose any of these other bacteria-based products? Yes, because the gels are time releasing. You know, you're releasing a small amount of bacteria 24 seven instead of the waste away uh, liquid. It's just really much more concentrated. So it's fine. You don't have to worry then. Good to know. All right. And I think you've touched on this. Like, go ahead and turn off the skimmer for a short period of time when you put these guys in. Right, because the skimmer is removing the bacteria. So, you know, you're, you're putting bacteria in the water column if the skimmer's on, it's going to start removing them. So turn off the skimmer for just a little bit, of, uh, a couple hours, turn off the UV because that's killing the bacteria too. All those yeah. types of things. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. And it, it is possible to overdose. <laughs> so be very careful when you're adding it. Yes. Because of the bacterial bloom. So we always recommend start slow. You know, nothing good happens fast in a reef tank in any type of aquarium. So you can always add a little bit more, you know, add a small amount, let it circulate for several hours a day, and then add a little bit more. That's the way to do it. So to just point it in. Yep. You know, it's interesting that we talk about overdosing. There's somebody that tagged us on Instagram that accidentally, accidentally overdosed and they're like, I, I did it way too much. It was my fault. And they were giving a shout out to their skimmer because their skimmer was able to pull out so much, but it still unfortunately had a negative impact because there was way too much added to the tank and they saw an issue, but. Right. So if, if you do accidentally overdose, how are you going to know? Well, the tank's going to get cloudy. You know, the yes. water's not going to be clear what to do. Turn on your skimmer turn on aeration because what's happening is that the bacteria are removing oxygen from the water. So that's, that's what's causing the issue is the lack of oxygen in the water. So get the water bubbling, put air stones in there um, and do a water change, get the bacteria out of there. If you have a UV, turn that on uh, and try to remove as much water in extreme cases you got to move the fish out of the tank until you can get the bacteria out of the system. So yep. um, I think you, that's what he ended up having to do was take the fish and put it in a temporary quarantine. Right. So the best thing is don't overdose. Yep. And don't, don't dose in like, I don't know, sometimes like when I'm cooking, I'll measure stuff out over the bowl that I'm about to mix it in, measure stuff out in like a separate cup, not over top of your tank. 
Yeah. Yeah. We've had that uh, where I don't know how, but people like with dosing pneumonia, well, the, the tip, you know, popped out. So how did the tip oh, wow. pop out in the whole bottle? <laughs> so, oh, no. Yeah. That's a different case. All right. So I think this might be kind of tricky to know or be aware of. If we've added eco balance to our tanks, how are we going to know that it's working? Is it, it probably you're not going to see it necessarily or will we yeah you're, to on you're, some things? you're not really going to be able to see it because the only way to know would be if you did some scrapings and a bacteria test and that's just beyond what can be done right now um and so it's, it's kind of like insurance you know you haven't had any issues can't say it's 100 percent uh equal balance because you need a, a good maintenance routine but definitely helps to add it on a regular basis to keep the Vibrio at bay along with waste away to break down the organics. You're just trying to keep all these places where the bad bacteria can get a, a foothold out of your system. All right. Good to know. I like that you compared it to insurance. <laughs> it's pretty much what it is. Yep, it's, yep. Nice. All right. So this is, my last question related to eco balance, I guess, but I could kind of be thrown into any of our other products. Is there a way to test your tank and see how the different colonies of bacteria bacteria are doing? Or are you just, you know, you mentioned a test a second ago, but like, is that something that's, I don't want to say doable for hobbyists. I'm sure anything is doable with a good amount of money, but well, I mean, there is, there's, there's a new service. There's nothing that a hobbyist can do at home. Um, I mean, you can get bacteria kits, but they're going to give you total counts. They're not going to tell you one from another. Um, so the, you know, the bacteria numbers could be nice, but it could be the wrong guys. Uh, so you, you need to do a genomic and there's a company aqua Bio bionomics um, that came on the scene one or two years ago, and uh, you can send a water sample, you can send a scraping sample to them, and, uh, and we have nothing to do with them. We're, we're not owner, we don't own 8% of them. Um, but what they do is they then will, in a couple of weeks, send you an analysis of the different types of bacteria they find in the samples. So you can the problem is a one-time shot isn't going to tell you. It's kind of like the ICP test one time. That doesn't tell you where you, where you are. You have to do this over time. And the science, the microbial science of an aquarium isn't known, well enough known to say, okay, this is the bacteria you need. And these are the numbers, the percentages and the absolute numbers of these bacteria that you need to create the perfect environment. Um, so you can detect it and building a database is, you know, is nice, but putting the cause and effect together we don't know that yet. Now, it'll detect if your tank is full of Vibrio, it'll tell you if the most common thing in there is cyanobacteria, you know, so if it's, if it comes back and you've got some nasty dudes in there, well, then, you know, you've got to do something. Um, but I feel like if you've got those issues, you're probably going to already see signs. Yeah, of them that's the, ex exactly. Them. But by that, you know, by that time, you're, you don't need to test to tell you you've got problems. You, you can see it right in front of you. Yep. <laughs> uh, so I find it quite interesting and it's definitely the way to go, but, but the science isn't there yet. And, and the other problem is, um, and as one who's been growing bacteria for years, just because we know that bacteria is in the tank and, and we want it to be in the tank, say we just knew this was the bacteria you needed to have. That doesn't mean we can grow it. Okay. Mm. There's a real, art um, to being able to grow bacteria. And we know this because we can take a sample. Um, it, it's not that hard to do. And we can count all the bacteria in a drop of water, in a mill of water or on the surfaces. We, we can count them. But then we start to grow them 
and we can grow three, four, five percent of that number. Wow. Like, where's the other 95%? We can't grow it because we are not good enough. You know, we don't know of the micronutrients or do the bacteria, some bacteria are feeding on the product because all bacteria have products and reactants. So, you know, what's one man's tr or one bacteria's trash is another bacteria's food Still. or, you know, the relationships. We are not that good yet. We cannot grow hardly anything that we can see in the water. Yeah. And the other problem, we're off on a little bit of tangent, we've got to have a seminar on microbial ecology is, you know, what, everything we do in the aquarium pushes the system to, to what we're, we're artificially creating that system. Is that really the system we want? This is a, a huge study I'd like to, you know, conduct somehow where you just got a lot of samples from a lot of different people and, you know, tanks that were in good shape, tanks that were in bad shape, and start to look at some patterns of the microbial ecology. But once you do that, how are you going to grow these? How are you going to affect it? Just because you add certain bacteria to the tank, if the situation is that these bacteria can't grow in that water because of what you've done, then you're just pouring, you know, your money down the drain. It's, it's a very complex problem. And that's one reason the EcoBalance, the Waste Away, all our bacteria products started out from samples in aquariums. Just because you add bacteria from some company that was a grease trap bacteria or, or someplace else, that doesn't mean it's going to grow in an aquarium. It's, you know, it's, it's different. It, a bacteria will not grow in every environment. You've got to think about it like fish. A panther grouper, great fish, not going to live very well in a freshwater aquarium. You know, and that's the same with bacteria. Just because you add it there, well, were they saltwater bacteria? Were they freshwater bacteria? Can they grow in this situation? So, Good thing to keep in mind. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steer us back on track and I've got, <laughs> um, I guess, like one or two more questions. So the reason that First Defense and EcoBalance are being used together and talked about in you know a team this month is because we have recipes where we show you how to use them together so if people are interested in using these together to see amazing results where would they go and find these recipes well you can go to our website and search recipes and you'll see them and 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 how this works together is that most corals lose color over time why are they losing color because they're not getting the food they need that brings them the nutrients they need that keeps them colored up and that is generally has to do with the symbiotic organisms inside the corals they are being housed and they have needs for vitamins and all sorts of micronutrients. And why aren't they getting that food? Well, as I've preached many times, the unintended consequence of the skimmer and the UV and the filter socks and the human need to keep your aquarium water gin clear is that we've eliminated the primary food source of corals, which is bacteria. Corals filter feed seawater 24 seven. And that seawater is full of bacteria. Our aquarium water is not full of bacteria, not even close to what the ocean has. And so, because, because we don't want it. And like I said, we want, we want perfectly clear water. That's not how these, that's not where these animals live. And so one way to get your corals healthier, to get them more colorful is to feed them these nutrients. And the easiest way to do that is let them do it naturally by filtering the water. So if we add bacteria to the water, the corals will filter feed those bacteria. 
Well, if we take it one step further and we pack those bacteria with nutrients, now we're feeding the nutrients to the corals through the bacteria. Reptile people know this. They, it's called gut loading, the crickets. I mean, a cricket is an empty shell, basically. If they can load up the cricket with all sorts of healthy things, when the lizard eats the cricket, it's getting the nutrients that it needs. And so how we do that, we recommend in this recipe, I'll go through it quickly, is you have some type of a vessel, a one liter, a quart, something that you can aerate and move the water. You put some aquarium water in that and you add a small amount of the EcoBalance bacteria. And then you add a drop or two of the first defense and the nutrient, the vitamins in the first defense become nutrients for these bacteria. And they will start dividing and incorporating these vitamins. And then you drip or pour, you can pour um, this bacteria laden water into your tank and turn off, turn off the skimmer for a little bit, the UV, and let the corals filter feed the bacteria that you're adding. And we've had lots of people do this, even fraggers and you know people that grow corals, and the colors come back. It takes a week to ten day, ten days, and you need to feed you know every day, every for a while initially if the corals don't have much color, or every other day. But just drip some in there, and you will see it. I mean, this you can see the coral color will come back because you're feeding them the nutrients they need via the bacteria, which is how they get them in the wild. That's pretty cool. That sounds like something fun to try. It is. And, and I mean, you can take some corals if you want to experiment with it and put some in one tank and some in another drip feed this mixture in one and your eyes will tell you, I mean, you, you can see it after a little bit of time, you can see the corals just uh, that are fed this so much better. And, it's not hard to do. You, you, you're going to keep animals. You're going to keep the corals and things like that. You need to treat them right and give them the nutrition they need. And yes, they like rotifers and stuff like that, but that's like French fries. You know, that's not the, it's, it's not the food they eat all the time. The food they eat all the time is bacteria. And when they're more colorful, what they are is they're healthier. And so they can stand and we will we'll circle back to the stress, the stress agents. When you're healthier, when you are physically healthier, you can handle stress better. You're not going to get as sick as much. And that's yep. the same thing we need to think about with corals, kind of a holistic thing. And your water quality will be much better too, because what are these coral, the bacteria going to do before they're filter fed by the uh, corals is they're taking some of the nitrate and phosphate out of the water too. So your water quality is going to be better. I like it. It's a very holistic approach. It, it is. And that's, you know, what, what you need to think about. That's my background as a, as an ecologist is look at the whole system. You got to take everything into account, just not one thing, because okay. think of, think of your, your system as this four or five dimensional elasticity. When you do one thing, when you push it that way, the system is going to react and it can react positively or it can react negatively. Um, exactly. Yeah. And that's why, you know, there's been, uh, especially in Europe, and I preach this too, where people over skim. What, what, do you, what do you do when you over skim? You're removing all the bacteria. That's why I say, turn your skimmer off just for a few hours yep. at night. What's going to happen? The bacteria in the water will get a chance to um, replicate. They will be filtered out of the water by the corals. Your corals will look better. You just fed your corals without doing anything. Okay. So yeah. exactly. stop like over skimming. <laughs> <laughs> we need bumper stickers. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So. We'll be our next round of stickers. That's it. All right. Well, I had one last question I was going to ask you sure. if I should use it. Both of these products, is it better to use them on a regular basis together or use them separately as needed? 
Well, it depends on your tank. If you have a tank full of corals, what I would recommend is getting the, uh, the what we call the color up recipe and using them together like that. But if you have a tank with you know, no corals and it's more fish, then I would use the eco balance separate from the first defense, use it like once a month to just get in there and keep the Vibrio or the columaris numbers low and use the first defense after a water change or, or when you're doing a water change, you're changing the water. If you've got a system where you're not using RODI and you're using your tap water, you need to dechlorinate it, use the first defense then. Depends on your situation. All right. Now, I don't think I've posted the recipe for this combination yet, but definitely if you're listening to this, if you're curious, if you want that recipe now, go to the website, like he said, and just search for recipes or stay tuned on our social media pages. I will have this posted maybe in the next week or two. Yep. Perfect. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think that wraps up everything that all the questions that I had. Is there anything else? No, I can say when you start anything new, go slow. Don't run out there and just start dosing tons of waste or <laughs> eco balance or first defense in your tank. You never want to do that, even though they're great products. Take things slow. And uh, as always, if you have questions, you can find uh, Hillary on social media. You can find us at info at Dr. Tim's Aquatics, and we'd be glad to answer questions and help you be more successful. Yes, absolutely. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again for listening to this for, uh, episode of the Dr. Tim's Aquatics podcast. This is Dr. Tim and Hillary saying good fish keeping. <laughs>